They just want to be under a king like Kyrie. Well, not any damn more. What's good, folks? It's your boy, Dookie. Before we go any further, man, I want to give my deepest sympathy, regrets, concerns, prayers, thoughts, upliftment, everything that you could give to somebody. I want to send that out to Gordon Haywood, his family, everybody involved, man, all the folks in Boston, man, the team, man, even the Cavs players for, you know, everything, just being there, seeing that, man. Um, Watched it live, you know, everybody, I'm sure you've heard it a million times. I'm sure you've seen the footage. I'm sure you've seen pictures. I've heard people talk about it. You know, it, it was about as gruesome as the PG injury. Um, Paul George, like you don't see that. You don't never want to see that. Nobody wants to see the game affected like that. Nobody wants to see a player hurt like that. That is, you know, if you're a real fan, you don't really, you don't go out your way to see people hurt like that. Um, five minutes into the season of hope and wonderment, you know, and, and, and whatnot, but we're going to keep on going, man. We're going to, the players, um, they kept on doing what they had to do. So we're going to keep on doing what we had to do. It was the kid versus the king part one. This is what the NBA whole summer was about leading up to this moment of the Cavs and the Celtics. Young Kyrie, new place with a bunch of new faces with, with a whole new playing style. Hopefully to show that, you know, he's more than just the ISO ball heavy guard, you know, that he can perform in movement and he can actually be a facilitating point guard. Um, I think it's real interesting because there's a lot of people who, at least people in the basketball world, podcast guys, analysts, you know, I think Kyrie is one of the most polarizing figures because they all recognize that he has an amazing talent. But how you judge that by the metrics or the eye test or whatever varies. Like the average person that's just watching the games thinks of Kyrie as a star, but there's a lot of guys who did not So for him to say, I want to be the man, I want out from this machine, you know, that has been to three straight finals. A lot of people weren't feeling that. I question whether, you know, sometimes you, you want, you want something until you get it, you know, <laughs> but the change came, the trade was here and we, you know, we've been through, you know, we had the game man. it was a pretty interesting game, man. Shout out to the Celtics again, because after that happened, you could tell that they were kind of just shell shocked. It was Kyrie, a bunch of young guys out Horford wasn't really doing what he needed to do. Marcus Smart was trying a little bit too hard. That first, that second half, that second quarter of the first half, man, you could just tell they got blitzed. It, it, it was tough. Whatever Brad Stevens said to them at halftime, you know, whatever they went through, they came out, put up an amazing effort to make it a game. So we had the new look Cavs and the new look Celtics. Let's talk about the Celtics because honestly, I see a lot of potential. I don't know, you know, a lot of people, you know, want to speculate about Hayward. I'm not going to speculate on the injury. The reports are out there about how bad it was or, you know, there's still so much time. I think he's doing the surgery today. So I won't speculate on how long he's going to miss. But if we pretend to know that he's missing this full season, it's got to be tough for the Celtics because whether or not you think Kyrie is the man, there are a lot of people who believe Hayward was in fact their best all around player. The one guy who was dynamic enough to create his own shots, hit open shots, play off the ball, guard, you know, the best threes and fours in the game, even, even two guards. Like he really had it all, you know? So uh, in a lot of, in a lot of people's opinions. So for him to go down and a lot more is being placed on really young guys, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. I mean, think about it. Starting yesterday, Marcus Smart was the longest tenured Celtic. That's crazy, you know? And until Markeith Morris comes back, 
You know, you don't really have a lot of guys who are great offensive players who have been playing a while who can really create their own shots and do things like that. So it was interesting to see, you know, how Jalen Brown will react, Jason Tatum. And I got to say, once they kind of shook off the rust, Jason Tatum, you could tell it was nerves. This is his first game against the Cavs. Against LeBron, his first shot, he throws up something that he'd crush in college. He throws up a little easy shot, and here comes LeBron out of nowhere to throw it into the stands. Like, that's your introduction to the NBA. You can't get a better introduction than that. So, after he kind of shook off the nerves and they came back in that second quarter, they definitely played with a lot more energy. They played with a lot of hustle. Like, and I think that's what this year is going to be like for the Celtics without Gordon Haywood, unless they make a move, and we won't speculate on that now. But it's going to be a lot of trying to out-energy teams. You got these young guys. You got Brown. I mean, he was all over the place. Brown had 25 points, six rebounds. Like, they're going to be out there out-hustling, trying to outwork you because they got these young legs. They got this energy. Kyrie, if he becomes a real facilitator, he, I mean, he had what? 10 assists last night, 10, 11 assists. If he can find these guys, drop these dimes and get them open, easy shots, I think that's only going to help their maturation for real. Now, the thing that worries me is I look up and down this roster and besides Kyrie, I don't really see any shooting. Maybe Al Horford because he can kind of space the big guys. Markeith Morris when he comes back. Not really somebody I would say is real shooting, but I just don't see a lot of shooting, and that's what's going to – that's where you're going to see, you know, if Brad Stevens is able to keep the ball moving, able to keep player movement going. So you're not having a lot of guys sitting out on the three-point line, waiting to get open threes and missing it. Like, that's just only going to, you know, destroy their confidence even more, you know. But they played hard. As for the Cavs, they won the game. Your boy LeBron James. I mean, what can we say, man? This is (laughs) every year, you know, they they, they say that's the year he's going to miss a step. And honestly, if missing a step is coming out in game one where you didn't play any of the preseason with a bad ankle and almost dropping the triple-double, 29 points, 16 rebounds, Nine assists, two blocks. Like, I take that missing a step every day. And that's really what it's been. You know, like, he's been so good that his missing a step is just coming down to he's still really better than most people. But, you know, maybe his dunk isn't as amazing as it was. There was things, though, about this game that if you go back and listen to my first video or my first little uh, mention of this team when I was talking about Derrick Rose and D-Wade. People were so mad. Cavs fans were just not feeling me. When I was on Reddit, I was saying these things and they showed their head last night. Derrick Rose, he he's going, and he did it. He, what Exactly what I said would happen, happened. He gets one or two plays where he, you know, he's fast. He still has a lot of explosiveness. He gets to the hole, throws it up, you know, uh, some amazing layup. The crowd goes crazy. The announcer is, oh, look at vintage D-Rose. He's back again. And then you really look at the numbers. Five for 14, one of three shooting. And that one that he actually hit, the three-pointer, was some bull. It was just a a, a last-minute heave. Like, he needs to stop. Don't even, you know, get that up. Yeah, his role is definitely going to be redefined when Isaiah comes back. But I just don't want to go through a whole season of this, of him being like, okay, you have 14 points because you just kept shooting. You just kept nonstop. Like, (laughs) you just kept, like, there was plays when I, I, I would see guys are open. You're not making the good play. You're like a low-budget Kyrie. You're like dollar store Kyrie right now. 
Because Kyrie was an amazing, he had an amazing three-point shot. He showed that last night. He hit like two or three threes. That was just, he just came off the screen and just buried two or three threes. That was just amazing. Like Kyrie won a three-point contest. Derrick Rose can't even get an invitation to the three-point contest to watch the crowd. But he's going to keep on jacking them. He's going to keep on. He's going to keep trying. Floor is not being spaced. He's just out here dribbling. And yeah, like I said, he makes some amazing plays. So the optics, the fans and the crowd, even at home, is like, ah, there's D. Rose. It's great. But when you look at winning basketball, what is he really providing? D. Wade, savvy veteran, three time champion. Same thing I said for him. If he came off the bench, do you know how much better the spacing on the floor would be? There was times when the Celtics defenders, when Rose and Wade were on the floor, just backed all the way off into the lane. There's no need to guard them out there. As long as they don't have the ball, even if they get it, hey, go ahead. Try your best. <laughs> do what you do. We don't even care. As long as we can slow down LeBron from getting to the lane. As long as we can, you know, gang up on these rebounds. Now imagine J.R. Smith out there. When he was out there, the ball flowed a lot more. When he was out there, you could actually move the ball around knowing that you can't back off of J.R. Because even no matter how bad J.R. shoots, <laughs> you, you, you let up off him, he's still going to shoot it. He's going to start hitting him in your face. That's what you don't get. With Rose and D-Wade. That's what you don't get. Jeff Green. Oh man. He's going to be the second LeBron. Coming off the bench. No he's not man. No he's not. He's going to do man. Jeff Green has been doing the same act. Since he's been in the league. He comes in. He does the same thing. He'll get you super excited. He'll do something in preseason. He'll do something in the game. He'll dunk on somebody. He dunked on somebody last night. It looked amazing. And then, what? Nothing. That's just what he does. That's just how it happens, man. Like, yeah, that's great coming off the bench, man. I, what bothers me watching this game, and I know it was game one. I know they still got a lot to figure out. I know that's what everybody's going to say. Oh, man, they won. They got a lot to figure out. They still, you know, working out the chemistry and all of this. I just don't know if Ego is going to let it, man. I don't know if it's LeBron, you know, telling the Cavs I, we need to have D-Wade starting because that's my homie. That's my boy. I'm so happy to have my buddy here. Hey. I can't front. If I was on the basketball team and my boy G played ball, damn right he'd be right there with me. So I can't be I can't fault him. I just wish that somebody, anybody, had the guts, the gall, the I don't know, to be like, this ain't gonna work. You struggled to beat a Celtics team that lost. Gordon Haywood five minutes into a game that you were up 16 points at the half. LeBron had to have an amazing triple-double night. Did you see those last play? Did you see that last play? When seven seconds left, they run down court, throw the ball to Jalen Brown. Derrick Rose doesn't even pretend to act like he's going to play any defense. He lazily comes in the last second after the shot is up, probably out of his hands, and throws a hand up. Like, you stop the ball because they're down by three. They need a three to even keep this going. Why, why are you running to the rim? But Jalen Brown misses that. LeBron's fighting with Al Horford. The ball gets tapped out. LeBron is the only person on the court who realizes that the ball is getting tapped out into the hands of Kyrie like literally one second after the ball is tapped out, he runs out to put defense on Kyrie. 
makes I mean that's just an amazing play to make Kyrie miss that shot when if LeBron wouldn't have acted it would have been a wide open three for Kyrie to to like if that's what this season is going to be like if it's still just going to be LeBron having to be Superman LeBron having to be superhuman what is all of this death about what is all of this great bench about I just want to see a little bit more. I want to see that. I want to see everybody reach their full potential, man. There was another game last night. Warriors, Houston. My two takeaways from that game. Forget the Warriors. Nah, <laughs> nah it's going to be tough, man. Hopefully there's no real lasting uh, damage to Draymond. I mean... He's important, man. People think that the Warriors are Steph and and Durant. Draymond is really, you know, on on any given night as important or the most important player on that floor. I said it. Yeah, they're going to win games. They'll win games without him. That's not a question. I mean, you still have Kevin Durant. You still got Steph. You still got Clay. You still got a lot of talented ball players. They're going to win games. No matter who misses. They can now, you know, last year they Kevin Durant missed a lot of time and they still won games. Like this is a team that won seventy one games without Kevin Durant. So they're gonna still win games without Draymond, but they're gonna miss him, man. In the crunch time, get some of these teams out here. Stuff Draymond do on that floor that ain't nobody else gonna be doing. So they definitely gonna miss him. And the Warriors, man. I mean, not the Warriors, the the Rockets. Those additions, man, are really important. P.J. Tucker really came through last night. Eric Gordon looked like a beast. Like, really? I don't know how much the Chris Paul thing is going to work just yet. We'll see. You know, he was kind of dealing with an injury. He didn't really get a chance to get back on the floor in crunch time last night. But we'll see. James Harden. Man, honestly, I know we talk about Kyrie. And I I think, hands down, Kyrie has the best handle in the league. Up there with, with, you know, Steph. Just in the way they can do things. But when he gets to cooking, when James Harden is cooking, you you out there on that island and you got to stay with him while that boy is doing, making his work. It's tough, man. I don't think it's too many in the league that can do exactly what he can do. So it's interesting, man. I'm back. The season, we we back. The season is here. We ready to go. No more talking and speculating. We actually got basketball. If you don't listen this far, I definitely want to know down in the comments, what did you think? Did you enjoy the games? Who are you excited to see? I'm here to watch some Philly. Philly will be on my league pass, my bootleg league pass, but don't don't, don't tell nobody, all right? Don't tell nobody about that. Who else are you excited to see? I'm actually excited to watch Dallas. I want to see what Dennis Smith can do. Woo, I forgot about him. He might, he, might make a, he might make a run at that rookie of the year. We got OKC, man. How's this going to work out with PG, Westbrook? Mellow? Yeah, it's a lot going on. It's your boy Dookie. I'm going to get up out of here, man. Y'all make sure y'all leave a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. It's going down. Woo!